How do you like this green? Oh, shots! What a shot! Hey, what? No little bit of water is going to stop you. Oh my word! Shot it! Oh, I don't know if she's going to hit it hard enough. I don't know if she's going to be able to get it to the hole. <laughs> yes, please. Come on, the husband! <laughs> Welcome to the third, no, fourth um, episode for the season, season two. Just, you know, like we always say before we start, thank you for all the engagement and everybody. It's almost awkward for us to see all the responses we're getting at the moment. The f amount of growth that we've seen is just incredible. So thank you to everybody that's watching it. And and hopefully we'll, com we'll continue to improve and evolve. And this morning is no difference for us to have somebody exceptional with us. So firstly, Arthi, morning to you. Yeah, morning. Morning, Michael. Yeah, what's that? Michael Balderstone from Balderstone Institute. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you so much, Michael, for being here. One influence in sport, and you know, it, we always know you as golf, but I'm sure as we go into it today, people will realize that it's much bigger than just golf, and you've diversified in such an incredible way. And also, what's so amazing, and we need to speak about that at some stage, you did the brand thing right from the beginning, therefore your reputation can go into other things in sports and diversify without being awkward or what's going on here. So yeah. congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank you. It's been a journey. Yeah. And just personal, uh, Michael, I, I, if you engage with anybody at your institute, if you speak to any of your staff, even your marketing department, the passion that comes out of your eyes is just very different to some of the engagement we always see in other industries. So congratulations on Thank all you. of that. And it obviously starts with you, and, and it's been filtered through to all the, the support yeah. staff that you have. So, Michael, tell us a little bit about you. Because I don't think people always know, unless they read some of the highlights, mm. how far your journey is. You're also a professional golfer. It's where you come from. Yep. So, yeah, from the UK. So I spent 25 years in the UK. Came out here April 1998. Um, and I'm just about to spend 25 years here. Just about, So I've just turned 50. Wow, oh, congratulations. So, so, um, so I'm pretty much 50-50 between. So my <laughs> accent is all over the place. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, so... Um, so my uh, going even further back. So so my father was a professional footballer and cricketer since 1958 or something. You guys have been involved in sport. Yeah. So so he so he turned pro football and cricket as a dual sportsman uh, when he was 18 in 1958. So um, got good enough to turn pro. Um, not necessarily as a, to to make a living out of it, um, but I went to uh, I went to college, um, PGA accredited college, and. Um, and yeah, pursued pursued that. Didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted I didn't wanted to be in golf. Um, if it had told me I was going to go into coaching, a shy lad, uh, no, you know, I would I would have said no. Um, probably uh, in the business of running a shop or, or something like that. Um, but but yeah, I found the passion of of, of coaching. Um, I played for three years while doing my apprenticeship. Gradually got into got into coaching my first lesson July 1994 um, and just loved it straight away had a had a had a knack in when I had no technical knowledge at all of, of how to coach the swing I was able to make improvements uh, I was able to have a, an empathy with uh, with them I think that's one of the big things that you have to have as a, as a coach um, and yeah I just had a knack for, for helping them when I knew nothing um, and for two or three years really you don't you don't know anything about the golf swing when you start coaching um, and uh, and yeah, gradually developed developed that passion. Um, Travelled around a little bit in jobs, and then got the opportunity to come out to South Africa, in 1998. So 2000 and 2002, um, went out of my own, um, and just uh, started started the plans for for setting up my my academy. Um, in the meantime, I did I did uh, six months here, six months in the states for two years. Um, and yeah, learned a lot, learned a lot there, how they do things over there. Um, and then came back with enough money to, um, to, to start my own, my own academy. So, so just uh, before you go into the academy that is today, just two things there. 
So obviously, you have to have a certain skill and personality and patience because coaching a junior, you know, that's still learning everything. Um, you know, it's not just the coaching, it's life skills that comes with it. You know, you, you're dealing discipline. with discipline. Discipline, a, young man, <coughs> a young man or a woman that's still going through, you know, so many different hormone changes and that versus somebody that's coaching a professional, let's say that's been there for three years and you take over, it's a, it's a far more refinement, I would assume. I'm yeah. not speaking <coughs> from a coach's experience, yep. but why the junior side was so much more attractive to you? Just give us a little bit of insight into that <coughs> as to what do you think um, you need to know or need to have as a personality in order to work with juniors versus somebody, let's say, that's more established. So I think it comes from a personal point of view. I uh, ask question, what's, what attracts me to that? I think it comes back to... to to what your purpose is and when you and obviously you don't know at the time when you when you're young um, but looking back and reflecting and, and and what i've developed and 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 asking the question why why have i developed this this academy like this um is is to help young people that's my purpose um and 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 i drew that through the through the vehicle of sport of, of, of sport essentially mm -hmm. and uh, golf was my was my sport initially and now we've we've we've, we've diversified um but yeah it's nurturing nurturing young people that's 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 what i've learned my purpose is so so hence it was it was um it was something that interested me it was a uh, you know all this talent um and and to 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 guide players along that journey through like you say difficult difficult years fantastic years but difficult years challenging years in in different ways um and um and what you can how you can mold those those youngsters so i've got two questions there you know when <coughs> one it must be quite um if a parent is listening to this it must be quite wonderful to know because you know when we're young we get influenced quite easily mm. by the teachers that's in our lives and yep. very much by the friends that yep. we associate yep. with Their group, yeah. so it would be wonderful to know for a parent that you know I go to the Boulderstone Institute and this is the type of environment that it's they find it as their purpose. Um, and I would feel very comfortable knowing that my daughter or son um, is at one of your academies. Um, and then the second part of that, and that's right, there was not a question, just a, a general statement. Yep. The second part is navigating. So you go from sort of learning from a lot of people uh, between your experience in South Africa, obviously as a professional, and then from America's um, academies. Then to come back and trans transfer that into a business skill. Mm. Is, you know, you can be as passionate as you want to. You can be as good as you want to, but there's still business principles that needs to apply to maintain the academy, to grow it, to make it sustainable, yep. and have a future for it. Yep. Talk, talk, talk to us about that. So uh, in, in the same way that when I started <coughs> coaching, I had zero technical knowledge of coaching. Uh, when I set up the business, I really had no idea about running a business. Um, Do you think it was easier? So I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. Uh, I just knew that it was something that I had to do. Um, it was almost my destiny that that was that was the route that I was going to go. Um, you know, I want I, I wanted to be able to 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 not rely on other people to 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 to, 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 to if something wanted want needed changing, then I wanted to be in a position where I could just change it. Um, so going back to being a bit of a control freak, but it's 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 more that 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 you want to be in control of things, because I've got a, a high level of responsibility. So I want to I'll take an responsibility for it and accountability. Yeah. Mm. So I'll, I'll I'll take responsibility for it. Um, so yeah, I, I I had the courage to do it. So that's probably the only thing that I that I had. I had the courage to do it. I had the vision of what I wanted to do, which has evolved completely since from 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 the very narrow that I wanted yeah. to do. Um, it's evolved as we've grown, but um, yeah, I had the courage and and very, very little else. So I didn't know anything about marketing, didn't know anything about, you know, in any of the aspects, any of the aspects. Sales, I'm, I'm still useless at sales. So so I'm, I'm, uh, I, I don't run my business on it. I'm not a sales-driven person. I'm a service-driven. I run a service-driven business. But your and actions... Then I, then I market it. So yeah. that's that's it. And, and that probably comes from the fact that I'm useless at sales. But also, I'm so passionate about the service that we provide that that's what I'm obsessed with, and then I market I market what we do. Um, so that that's how I drive my business. Um, so yeah, I knew nothing about it. I I eventually, you know, we started 
we start so so I advertised for um for probably nine months before we started. We started February two thousand and four and I started advertising in the April of two thousand and three. Um and at the time I was still over in the in the States. That was my last seven or eight months uh, in the States. Um and in that main in those days it was hot mail. Those were <laughs> they were they, they were, were they were um you know, I ran an advert in the Tita Green magazine um and uh and 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 the goal was to get 30 kids um and it was like like i said it was to it was to to set up a a full-time holistic high performance training uh program for golfers that had finished school last day that was the that was the age group so it was school leavers to bridge that gap between junior golf and the professional ranks because what i'd seen was we had amazing and still have amazing junior um uh, um, environment here to, to to nurture juniors. What what we what what's in place and what SAG in, uh, SAGA in those days, the Golf RSA now, what they did, what the provinces do. Um, in those days, and the Annual Foundation was juniors only. Um, so a lot of guys were they'd, they'd nurture them through juniors, and then they were left their own devices. Very few guys went to the states in those days. Um, so there was kind of they were left to their own devices. Diners tour, they were what became the IGT um, tour, um, was kind of around at that time as well. But there was very little. I mean, there was nothing. There was there was um, y you might have a coach, and that's been it. So there was no no one that was doing a high. The feeder performance. programs were limited. Yeah, exactly, and and there was nothing holistic. Um, so 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 I, so I set up the program. It was a one year one year program, um, and we provided. We were out at Favay's driving range down the road here. The old Favay's driving range, uh, which is closed down now. So we started there, um, and it was me as the coach, and Dion Fancel was the psychologist, and I had a fitness lady, and so I provided the facilities. We put on a tournament every week, which we still do, and put on a medal tournament. Uh, those days we went uh, to a different uh, different course every every uh, every week, and um, and yeah, and so my my goal was to get thirty kids, um, and I got seven. We opened with seven, um, and a week later we had six. That was <laughs> that was the first first change. I thought, welcome, uh, you know, to, the welcome to business. Well, exactly, exactly. And it was nothing to do with the th thing. It was actually a dis disagreement between two divorced parents. Uh, the mum put the kid in, the dad pulled him out. Um, and but that, yeah, that was kind of the first challenge. And um, and within a year we had twenty four. Um, so it grew because it was nothing. Um, and um and, and yeah so so it was it, it it was to i can't remember what your original question was i've gone off the off, off, off track here but no you've but, not uh, gone off track you are completely on but track. but yeah it was it was just to set up that holistic that holistic program um and and kind of kick it on from there yeah yeah we were talking about junior golfers uh, because i think it's everybody's easier you know nowadays especially and you must know it a lot of people are saying oh we have a junior academy or whatever it might be but I, I think that in the modern times, you, you know, it can't just be come and spend half an hour and move along. You know, it's like you say, how do we nurture this to either become a professional or work within golf, whatever that journey might be, and which I really am fascinated about is the education side of it mm. that's really coming into play now where, you know, you can, I always say when you were younger, you know, if you think about this, when they said you become a, a lawyer or doctor, whatever that might be, and not that I became any of that, but they limited you so badly. When we were younger, I wish there was a guy that can come to the school and just shake you and say, listen, if you're going to be a lawyer, you don't necessarily go and have to practice in court. You can do anything you want after that. Mm. But as a foundation, it's good to have that discipline and whatever the, the benefits might be with that. Yeah. So here we are today, this incredible journey. You, you chose South Africa, which is, I mean, back in those days, it must have been a little bit odd because the UK to the States and Asia is probably a little bit more attractive but you end up in Africa. So we all are very grateful for that because mm. the economic impact that you've subsequently made, not just in the performance of golf, uh, the growth of golf, but also the business side of golf. You know, Michael, it's not just the people that you employ at the Institute, it's the economy around it, the suppliers, you know, the facilities that you are in, the people that have to maintain the grounds, the staff that's at the range, the Huddle Park, which is definitely benefiting from your position there. All of that is a big economic footprint. Um, yeah. And it's probably good to have a personality like you because it's a big responsibility. Mm. 
And when it comes to kids and parents, um, I might as well dive into that with you a little sure. bit. Um, firstly, if you don't mind, sorry, before we go into that, and I mustn't forget that, but just tell me a little bit about, so I go right now, I've, I'm a parent, whether it's in, where are you currently? Mm. What is, what is my, if I have a kid right now that's maybe not sure what to do, or a daughter that's unsure about this, where do, where do you stand right now? Just give us a little bit of insight as the What is the prerequisite yeah, what's of the joining your academy? position for Michael Baldstone? Yeah. Okay, so, so so let me explain. So we'll focus on the golf. Yeah. Um, so let's kind of explain how, how we evolved from that original yeah. program. So yeah. so we ran that for a few years and we were around 20 to 24 for a, for a bunch of years, some, some really good players. Um, but... You know, it got to the point where a I wanted to grow it beyond that, and then you got to you got to look for where 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 you want to grow, um, and also looking at the success rate. Um, so, so in our second year, sec second and third year, Toto Timber was in our was in our academy. Okay, um, we spoke about him yesterday. That uh, uh, Dylan won. Dylan him so won. So Dylan Nadi was. Um, the last player of color to win on tour, and the previous person was Toto Timber, 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, so, so, so he was one of our success, uh, our uh, early successes. Um, he came, as, and that was a prime example coming through the Ernie Els Foundation. Um, Is that where he comes from? So, so, so he was in the Ernie oh, Els okay. Foundation. Okay. So, so he's from Kay. Victoria, Mamelodi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in the Ernie Els Foundation, and then finished school, and then was on his own. Okay. Um, so go back to what I was previously saying, and a talented youngster. But he was 110th in the national rankings okay. when he joined us. Put him on a scholarship um, for a couple of years. And within a year, he was top 10 in the country. Um, he'd come, I think, third in the SA Amateur. Um, and within 18 months, he'd turned pro. Wow. Uh, winning the Vusu and Gabemi. Um, and at that stage, the, the top 10 in those days was, it was quite a strong top 10. So George could see a... Joel could see in those days. Swatzel. Really, really strong player. Uh, Swatzel was a little bit earlier, but you're talking 2005, 2006. Okay, yeah. So Brendan Grace, yeah. uh, George Katsia, JB Kruger, uh, Niels Kittikat, they were all in the top 10 in those days. So it was, it was a quality top 10. And then a lot of guys uh, they have, have, have had very successful careers from that. So so, so the, the success rate, uh, although we were, we were running a, a fairly good program, Success rate was always going to be small when, <coughs> when your only goal is to get guys on tour. Yeah. Um, and then a bunch of them, we 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 always improve the guys. You know, we, we have a, a a great environment. We train them good. We we provide good good facilities, good coaching. Um, but when you've got a success rate of one or two percent, which is pretty normal mm. for, for high performance yeah. um, academies around the world, <coughs> um, then you know you've got to look at, at you know what 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 you can do more for the others. Mm. So uh, in those days, uh, Damlin used to run a, uh, run a program, Damlin and uh, LMB Campus. They run a program in conjunction with the PJ, which is a two year, is a two year program. So I approached the PJ and I wanted to run a similar program and um, we ended up running their full, their full, uh, what used to be the apprentice program or still is the apprentice program. So we it as a three year program, got the, uh, got the accreditation to run the program um, so the guys um, could then come to us, um, get training in all aspects of the golf industry, get a qualification, stay amateur, um, have an amazing experience for three years um, as a college experience in South Africa, and then make the decision whether you're going to uh, pursue a career in golf, pursue a playing career still, um, having had that three years of, 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 <coughs> of competing on the amateur circuit, or doing something else. Okay, so that. 2008 we got the accreditation to run that um and that's that really revolutionized the the, the business because then obviously that's a um that's, that's a great sell for the parents <coughs> yeah um and and in those days you know it went a little bit strange for a while where, where a lot of parents were about five six years ago weren't too fussed about getting qualifications mm. and a, a lot of parents were putting their their guy on on the mini tours uh, the the kids on the many tours for two or three years, um, but in those days and and luckily it's come back now. But quali qualification is 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 now a um, really important to the parents, and um, and so yeah, that revolutionised our our business, um, and grew pretty rapidly. Fifty sixty kids, um, 
with those two programs, what we call our Elite Academy now, which was the original program, and then the PGA Diploma program. Um, and then 2013, we we then went to a high school program. We opened up a high school program. Um, because then I'd seen, I'd seen the trend there was that a lot of our talented players, the parents were bringing them out of school in and going to homeschooling, but a lot of them weren't finishing. So they get to 15, 16, doing homeschooling, playing the, the amateur circuit. And some of those guys have made it. Most of them didn't. Yeah. yeah. So, I, so I wanted to find something that was going to provide the flexibility of the homeschooling, um, that they could compete more because the traditional private schooling was, wasn't allowing that and doesn't allow that um, to the extent that the top players want and top juniors want, um, but also to provide more structure. Um, to take the pressure off the parents and to make sure that they can actually finish their education. So, so I set up my, my our, our, our full time junior academy. Initially, did it with a with a school, uh, Abbots College. We we partnered with it for a year, but then um, that didn't give us the flexibility. So then we 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 went out on our own, became a Cambridge study centre, um, and since two thousand fourteen, we've been running that program. So essentially, our main our main programs are our Elite Academy which is the original program, which we've got half a dozen to 10 kids on every year. We've got our PGA diploma program, which is post-matric, um, which is a three-year program to qualify the guys for, for the golf industry. Um, all of this involves elite training, high performance training with, 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 with all the programs. And then uh, full-time junior academy um, are, are our main golf, golf programs. We do a greenkeeping program. We've got about four or five kids on that as well. Um, but yeah, the, the junior academy and the diploma program are our PDA diploma program are our, are our biggest programs. Um, and, 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 and there, there, the essence of the business became high performance training combined with education. And that, and that really became a major philosophy, uh, of our business. So, um, so yeah, so what, what are we, what, what is the prerequisite? So, um, it's uh, for the players, it's about having a, um, having a great attitude. Um, having some potential um, and wanting to do it, essentially. You know, if we see that the kids, the parents are wanting them to do it, but the kids not, it's not going to work. So Can you uh, hypothetically, sorry to interrupt, yeah. let's say you finished um, matric and all of that yeah. and you're done with school, mm. it's not like you need to be a certain handicap in order to join um, the so institute yeah, like so, you could so be like a 12 by metric yeah so, have this, so, you know. so rough guidelines is nine handicap or below okay um but even uh, with the handicap system at the moment you know you can be a we, we get plus handicaps that are nowhere near correct a nine yeah. handicap and we can get a eight handicap mm. essentially a lot better than a, than a plus handicap so so those are guidelines everyone has to has to has to do a a game evaluation anyway they have to sit down for an interview with the the, the and the parents or at least one parent um so that's where we're so we're looking for is the potential so can we get so so the pga's requirement so after our after our they finish uh, um, through us then there's an opportunity to join the pga and their requirement is a five handicap or below for uh, for, for males i think it's seven handicap or below for for, for females so so our, our, our minimum five criteria can we get them in three years to meet those criteria so oh, that know, makes so a lot with, of sense with with three years of full-time training from we can pretty much do that five, right. so or, yeah. so we've had we've taken guys with great attitudes that might be new to the game on an 18 handicap that we've been able to scratch within those three years okay it's not about it's never about where they are it's about where we, where we can get them the process I mean, you're, you'll know yourself you've you've we, we've all known kids that are amazing at 14, 15. They might be number one in the country. By the time they're 18, 19, they're not even playing. Yeah. You know, so, so, so it's never about where you are. It has to be about your attitude and do you have some kind of ability that we can get you to the minimum requirement to join that PGA for that, for that program. And obviously, we want, we want kids to come in and add to the, to the culture and be a, a positive contributor to the culture. And uh, what's considered the junior? Sorry, just for listeners. So junior, so grade seven to grade twelve. Grade seven we, to twelve. Take. Yeah. So you, you're saying that by the time they get to grade seven, uh, once they fall into junior, the prerequisite on that. What 
So, so yeah, so so the the nine handicap or below is the is the requirement for the PGA. Okay, program. got you, got yeah, you. For our okay. junior program, it doesn't really. Okay, I hear again, what you're again, goes, it's, it's about potential at that you, age. Got you. Ta talent identification at 13, 14 got is you. almost impossible. Yeah. Um, who's going to make it? Who's not? Um, and because we're adding the education, we'll put a major emphasis on the education. If the if the golf side, if the the education is falling short, they're bugging around in the class and they're behind where we feel they should be, and they're all on. On, on their own pathways and their own work at their own pace. That's the beauty of the program. But if they're behind the pace that we've set them, we stop the golf. Yeah. And that might be for an afternoon. It might be the Friday medal they don't play. It might be for a week. They yeah. don't play until they catch up. So we put a high emphasis on the on, on the academics. And if as long as the academics are okay, we put on a great, uh, provide a, an, an amazing golf program for them that they can, in, in a great environment for, to nurture them. Um, and they can go to amazing standards. Um, but yeah, the prerequisite, prerequisite attitude and some, some kind of ability and yeah. attitude. Yeah. Obviously, the earlier we get them, the more we can do with them. So what is the earliest I can join? So grade seven is the youngest we it's will take. It's the youngest. Full time, uh, yeah. Uh, we, we, we obviously have programs from four years from four years upwards. Oh, okay. Uh, that's exactly at, what at, I was going to ask. So yeah, I can bring my kid to you when it's, let's say, at a young age, because certainly now I've got a young daughter and I'm not sending her because I know she's going to be a professional golfer. I don't know. Mm. But I really like the discipline that comes with it. I wanted to have some ability in sports. So we're filling a few sports out at the moment. Yep. So you're saying sort of four, at the age of four, that's when you guys have a program already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. BSI Kids Golf Program. Okay. So from four years upwards. And that's, at that stage, it's fun. Keeping yeah. it fun. Yeah. Uh, a lot of motor skills and, and physical literacy stuff, um, using the snag equipment, lots of short game stuff, getting them on the mashy course at Huddle Park there, yeah. uh, and really keeping it fun. The My staff member that, that runs that is, is brilliant at that age group. Um, and then they progress into more competitive kids uh, age group where you're playing the, the SA Kids Golf. So that's kind of from 8 to 12. Okay. Um, again, we won't take them full time. It's too young to, yeah. to, to specialise. Um, that's why we, we, yeah, I won't even touch those kids full time. Um, and, and then once they get to grade seven, um, which is the start of the Cambridge systems, high school system, yeah. rather than South Africa is, is, is grade eight, but that, so we take uh, Cambridge high school starts in grade seven. So we take them, uh, from then full time. Yeah. And why do we say, because we hear this a lot uh, from some of the big players at the moment, uh, Tiger Woods being one of them. I think it was since he was three. Oh, he I think he started swinging. Yep. It was really yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but what's so, because you look at it, Formula One champions are getting younger. Even mm. if you look at um, at employment, you know, sometimes it's, it's getting younger at certain stages because yeah. the corporates want them a little bit earlier so they can mold them slightly better. It yep. could be a negative or positive. But... Why do you have that sort of approach? I mean, what would you say to, you know, not everybody can be a Tiger, and I'm not making a direct relation. But even myself, I'm sitting here, I just feel that the kids need to have fun first, you know, and, and whatever they specialize in will come naturally out. And whatever they want to enjoy, because I can tell you now, there's no doubt about that. When, you know, it, you're coming from a very staunch rugby school myself, the kids that the parents jumped on from a very early age and literally started drilling from they were six or seven mm -hmm. never made it in the rugby. And they yep. rebelled it's, it's in their life in it's general. It's because it's, it becomes a job too yeah. early on. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So that love for the game and the passion gets lost you know, down the road because it feels like a job. It's like you have to do this, you have to practice, you have to play golf. This is the only option. Yeah, you know where you start a bit um, when you, you know, keep that enjoyment in the game and what most of the guys on tour stop golf is not because they don't have the ability, it's because they hate the game. Yeah, or they don't enjoy it anymore. Yep. If they've yep. lost the passion and the drive, waking up in the morning, going to the range or going to a tournament is not what fuels them anymore. Mm. You know, so it's crucial to um, narrate that. Michael yeah, Phelps. So so Sorry, so. Yeah, so it brings on to, to sports parenting. Um, so, I mean, Brandon Stone just published an article now. In I saw Amber. that. I saw um, that. Um, it's article. And, it's, and, it's, and, article. And, 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 it's, and it's brilliant and well done, Brandon, because because it's 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 got it out in the open. and It's and, reality. And, and someone, yeah. so, and we, we all know it exists and, and we've all seen it, um, but, but, but someone with the influence of Brandon to, to come out and, 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 and say that and, and put some emphasis on it um, is brilliant. Um, so... 
Yeah, absolutely right. They've got to. You've, you've got to have fun, and 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 there's a major misconception about what Earl Woods did with with Tiger. Um, he he definitely kept it fun for Tiger. Mm. He he didn't, and and so many parents have they've 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 misread what 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 Earl did, and and thought okay, this is what he's got to be, and you're only going to specialize from four years on, th- three years old. You're going to specialize in in golf and. This and is that, the way it's going to be. And that and Navy I'm approach or yeah, Army um, yeah, approach. So, 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 so I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, th- th- this is what you're going to do. And you listen to Tiger and he'll tell you the exact opposite. Yeah. And, and, and he wasn't a multi-sport kid. You know, it's, and, and I've been to, I've been to so many sports science conferences where, where Tiger's held up as the, as the, as the single sport example. And he wasn't. And and there's, there's there's videos of him saying oh, and he's, say, say, he's saying he got he got his speed from playing baseball. Yeah. His rotational speed from playing baseball. You know, so so and he was playing basketball and 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 he was a sprinter and baseball. You know, and he say he grew up playing baseball. So 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 there's massive misconception and so many parents of 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 they believe no, you've got to start, you've got to focus on one sport early on, and then you put in a ceiling. You're definitely put in a ceiling on where where your youngster can get to because they won't develop the all round motor skills and physical literacy to break through those ceilings and get to the, get to the top. So, so, you know, it, it's, it almost doesn't exist that you have, you have a, a, a someone, an athlete that's got to the top level in a, any sport that specialized so early, so young. I mean, if you so look at his documentary, happen. Tiger Wood said his best friend was his dad. Yeah. Mm, now, if you. he if he was in that you know army or navy mode of uh, the relationship between the father and son, mm. he would have hated the game if his father wasn't a great impact yeah. from a positive perspective. Yeah. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? You can. There's there's a fine line between those factors. Yeah. I think he's he's done a huge and beneficial job to tiger to where he is. Yeah, and yeah. I don't and think they would change anything anyway. Yeah, and 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 and, and what's fascinating is that, that as soon as they got to a golf course, the roles reversed. Mm. And it went from Earl being in charge at whatever age it was. So Tiger was then the guy in charge. It was it, so he, he was the boss. As soon as they stepped out of that car, got into that car park, he was the boss. And you see so many parents that's the and you know SA Kids Golf is is brilliant. US Kids Golf, uh, all, all around the world, there's brilliant things there. But you 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 so often you'll see the parents caddy in in those environments, and it's great for the parents to 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 caddy. I'm not saying they mustn't. Parents be involved. Okay, it's brilliant. But you mustn't be dictating to your kid yeah. because so you're not giving them opportunities to learn. Yeah. So and so many of the parents who hardly play themselves, some of them don't even play themselves. There, there's <laughs> no five nine. And and they end up having arguments with their kids about what club to use, and then they're upset with them, and so they don't allow them to to to, to learn the the key lessons that they need to learn themselves because they're the ones that are always in control. And I'll switch it completely. Tiger, you're in charge. Yeah. Full time programs early on. It must be fun. Um, they must play lots of different sports. Then they're building up their 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 foundation of the physical literacy, which is life skills too. Sorry, yeah. Michael, but yeah, it's part of it's yeah. life skills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so so a bit of life skills in terms of the team sports compared to the individual sports. Um, you you got straight line sports, you got rotational sports. So just just get a nice a nice mix of everything, and then the time to specialize is fourteen fifteen, um, which 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 is where we where we bring them in. So, um, so 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 that's why we don't do. To do the younger ages, um, and I- even then we train a fourteen-year-old differently to an eighteen-year-old um, because they're they're going through different stages in their lives. Um, but yeah, I mean, going back to, to parenting, you know, there's the, there's so many things that these a lot of parents are thinking is going to be the best for them, which is the exact opposite of what they should be doing. It should be keeping it fun. We, we've got to be we've got to be getting the guys to 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 self-reliance. So we call it the, the, the three selfies. So self, self-responsible, self self-reliant, self-disciplined. That, that's what your goal as a, as a parent should be to, to get, your, get your kids. And if you're, if you're on them all the time or you're, you're spoiling them too much, then they don't get to those points. So they're either gonna, gonna stay reliant on you or they're gonna, or the opposite is they, they, they reject you. So a lot of the kids that are, that where the parents are too hard on them and it's not fun, then they give up 
because it's not they're not enjoying it. You know, we, I've, I've had highly talented teenagers just quit like that because the, pa- the because of what the parents are doing to them yeah. and demanding. Yeah, yeah and Arthur, Arthur, you're going through it right now. You know, there's so many books that you can read about getting a kid. You know, but you still go and overthink it vastly. You know, and once you have the kid, and it's all of that comes through, and to say oh, the kid's going to be okay. You know, we are all f- so fortunate. To, you give the kid a great foundation, a great environment. They will adapt, <coughs> um, and and they will ultimately shine in whichever area they're going to shine, whether that's or not. And you said something very <coughs> interesting now before we had the uh, power. Thank you, Escom break. But the about saying because I, I you just got me there, and I'm really interested to say what you say next. Everybody thinks overseas is better. Everybody thinks if they need to make it, they must go overseas. We just had Dylan and Arthur, you just mentioned it. Most people actually know have never finished that side. And then they come back at some stage. You're much more qualified to talk about that. So just talk us through that, the mentality and yeah, so you're talking about going to U.S. college, essentially. <coughs> I'm say, just saying, you, you know, school, compared so. if you in, in <coughs> essence, I mean, do we have comparison in South Africa <coughs> in the academies and the way that we approach it? Yeah, you know, why go overseas all the time? And, and that's not always the lotto ticket. Yeah, so 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 there's no right or wrong answers, no right or wrong pathways. Um, so for some guys, it works tremendously well. So so for me, it works well for the guys that are the top top players the top juniors, um, and it gives them the opportunity to take the competitive level to a new level. Okay, so 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 they're 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 a big fish in a small pond, relatively in South Africa, which is actually an amazing pond. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, so so if you've reached the 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 top, you um, then your alternatives are you stay here and then you go on the Golf RSA tours. So then you'll you'll play your SA amateur and you know they do a great uh, a UK tour to play the Brabazon Trophy and 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 um, British Am. Japan and uh, so so those are the there's you know probably five or six weeks of the year that you you can expose yourself to the international competition um, apart from the international uh, guys that come here this time of year for the SA amateur um, but yeah so it, it it works really well for the guys that are they've, they're they're almost not fully developed in terms of player, but they're fully developed in terms of they've got the skills, they've got the performance levels, and they they need to ramp up the challenge point. You know, so th- yeah. the, the, you, you can sum up the entire development process in terms of getting the challenge point correct. So so y- 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 if you're number one in this, let's call it a small pond, to ramp up the challenge point, you go over and 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 certainly division one, you'll 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 be competing at a higher level um on a on a weekly basis so that that's who it works well for if 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 you think you're going to go over there and you haven't you haven't developed your technique um the way it needs to be done and your skill levels and they need to be done and think that the development structures over there are going to be better than here you're wrong because they don't go okay. so colleges want to recruit the best players that they can to compete for their college not that's necessarily it. to make that's you it. better. They're not there to develop you. Okay. The by competing, so they they develop players by competing. So your your typical coach over there is not a coach, he's a manager. Okay. So 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 it depends on who you are, what stage of your development you're at, whether you're gonna do well or not. And some guys have done well. Um, but the the, the majority of the guys that they haven't reached that level at eighteen, they've still got few years of development to go in all the different aspects um i believe the development structures are better here than they are over there so that's that's it in, in a nutshell because it then they're not geared up for it. they want to recruit the best players they can to compete for them and and if you're not in the first team then you don't even often get to train with the guys so that's why I, uh, we we find a lot of guys come back early on whether it's after one year even earlier than that um fairly high percentage won't finish um you know they think they think america is what they've seen on tv and you know it's a vast country and um there's a lot of colleges in the middle of nowhere um so you've 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 got to make sure that it's it's at the right time for your development and you're going to the right place 
and the top guys they get the choices and and they there's division one the top colleges have got amazing programs and they'll be flown everywhere they'll get all the all the equipment and it's 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 amazing below that there's not much there so they end up coming back and 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 uh and continuing their development journey here yeah i suppose it is a bit of a cliche but if we just talk about always greener pastures um mm. a lot of talk at the moment is that you know and we heard this now often as well when the local guys i mean when there's a co-sanctioned tour and some of the top players come here and they just look at the way that they're training and practicing and the dedication that they show then those guys are like what you know and to be at that highest level of competition i don't think people understand the sacrifice and what goes on behind the 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 scenes always yes. i remember this this big podcast station in in america red tigers daily um, approach to his golf you know talking e even outside of his prime mm. by the time they got towards the end of the day they said i felt i feel tired mm. to explain it to you you know, you think in the morning he does his rounds, then he trains, then he's back on the course, then he's that, then there's another an hour and a half, and by the time it's 8 o'clock, he's now finished, and he's been on the course since he was, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning. And just talking through it makes you bloody tired. So make no mistake, it's a completely different sacrifice. Um, and I think we have an incredible program here that has ramped up over the years incredibly. Um, so really, Michael, let's just take a moment there, and I wish that parents can just sit down, watch this for an hour, before they make any big moves with their child in any type of sport. Mm. Um, because you're talking from such an experienced perspective. Um, you also mentioned earlier about parents getting too involved. We've seen it so many times where parents get involved to a place where it's starting to hurt the child. Mm. You know, they think they come from a support place. But here's the other thing, which is also reality. They also sometimes live through their kids. Um, you know, they maybe didn't <coughs> reach that pinnacle point in, in, in whatever sport they're going for. So they want to do that through their kids. And whatever fame and fortune comes with that, they're sort of chasing that with the kid. Yep. And then that's that hurts your kid at some stage. Any opinion on that? Yeah, so I could talk talk about this for, for a week. Um, yeah, so, so, so there's so many aspects to it. So 100%, a lot of them are... Mm. The, they're, they're they're too domineering they're they're living it living living their dream through their kids um and you know ev so everyone comes from from having the right intentions you know i've never I've, and i've experienced a fair amount of parents that are doing it completely wrong and they all come from the right intentions okay so we all love our kids and and we all want the best for them and um but it's just understanding what's best for your kids and and it's again it's not a just like whether you go to us college or not it's not a one size fits all. There's no formula. There isn't. There isn't. So, so I mean, there's some best practice stuff, um, but you know, you, you need to be supportive. Um, but it's like, so there's a balance, and 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 what works for one kid um, doesn't work for another kid. So that that's a key thing as well. So again, parents parents will often look at what the top the top junior around at that stage. What does their dad do? and follow what their dad does okay and it might work for that kid because they've got that kind of relationship or got that strong characteristic that they can take it you know some of our some of our most successful players they've had they've had parents that have been really involved and sometimes it looks like it's over the top involved and um you know arguments on the course and things like that and and there's big exam examples where the, or relationships are broken down um but th there's there's been highly successful players that have come through and 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 the and the parents certainly normally one parent being almost a pushy parent okay um but it works for that dynamic and then other parents i uh, see that okay so i also need to be tough on 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 my kid and i want to follow that and because they're different personalities it doesn't work Okay, so so you've got to understand what works for for you for your kid. So so typically being very supportive and having one almost over supportive parent can be positive as as long as you don't go beyond that. And and the dynamic has to change as they get older as well. You know, so so because uh, at a certain point they're going to rebel. So 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 the dynamic has to change, and you have to, you have to move over to that self reliance, um, and. And the self-discipline because you can't continue to instill the discipline 
at 13, 14, most teenagers don't have the discipline. Um, but at some stage, if they're going to make it, they're going to have to, what you're talking about with, with Tiger. So there's no way that he developed that self-discipline if Earl was the only one that was instilling the discipline and it didn't come from Tiger. So, you know, it's clear that Tiger was the one who was saying, no, let's go, let's practice. And, you know, and, and it's, it's carried on. So, so, so you've got to look at what's, what's right at 13, 14, how much discipline do you need to, to enforce compared to at what stage for that personality do you start to back away a little bit and they become more in control. So, um, but yeah, be supportive. You know, the certain don't do's, um, you know, I don't like the parents to be, to be providing the solutions. Um, so the drive home and the, the lecture on the way home, like, why didn't you do this? Why did you do that? Uh, that's a no, no kids hate that. Um, so you, you've got to provide the opportunity for the kids to learn. Okay. Learn from their own mistakes. So A is, is it's having the environment that is okay to, to make fail yeah. and to make mistakes and not be, not come down hard on them. So, so our, our, we, we, we remember things based on emotion. So you've got to make sure that you, you, as a parent, you, you add emotion to the positives and you take the emotion away from the negatives. And, and mo most of these parents that are doing it possibly wrong, they're over emotional for the negative and they easily forget about the positive and they don't even mention the positive. So, so if you emphasize and put emotion to the positive, then that's what they will remember. And then for the, for the, let's call them failures where they make mistakes, which they have to do in order to learn, but then they need to be able to reflect and to learn it themselves. So the ideal situation is that you don't, you don't do the, you, you haven't played well, whatever, come, let's go get a McDonald's. But I mean, the in your program, just trust the program. It's been yeah. proven. It's got credibility to it. Yeah. And if you're going to take the time and the money to do so, trust the environment you've placed the kid in. Yeah, hundred percent. Trust again. So, so, y you know, th so I mean, uh, Butch Harmon always said that the Tigers' number one coach was always his dad. Okay. So, so that's fine. So, so, so you you have a major influence on 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 your children, and that's positive but make it positive and don't make it the negative. So what Brandon was talking about with, with a 10 year old kid being shouted out and then being clopped, you know, that's emotion. That's major emotion. And that's gonna, that's gonna be burned into the, into that kid's psyche where you were saying earlier, then it becomes work. You, know, you can't make putting work for a, for a 10 year old. That kid's gonna, he's gonna give up. He's gonna go do something where that emotion isn't, isn't there. Um, and we've seen it over and over again. So, so take the emotion out of it. Give, give the give the kids the opportunity to reflect and learn. Chat to them later. Ask them questions. But if 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 you if you're the one trying to solve problems, then you're not solving any problems because you might have the answers. But it's not important for you as a parent to have the answers. It's important for the kids to have the answers. So, come with the right questions. And allow them to reflect. And if they're still not getting it, guide them there. You know. So so it's, it's, it's how how kids learn. You, 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 if, if you're being told all the time, those ears are closed. Drive home, wada, 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 wada. those ears are closed. And the, and the uh, kids are hating it. Uh, we know they just want to go home, do, do something, watch TV, whatever. And they've got a negative connotation with, with golf now and performing. So they're now, now going to be scared. Next time, do I take the risk of that shot? Um, you know, do I put myself out? Do I want to play the next tournament? This is where kids give up because they get to a point where they don't want to do it anymore. Now, just something on, because we always hear about the, if you look compare programs, you've obviously seen programs around the world mm -hmm. and you s place massive emphasis on attitude. Mm -hmm. What do you, s how do you see the, the juniors, um, uh, people come to your, the commitment level versus an overseas country like America or the UK? Do you mm -hmm. see similarities in that or let me not answer for you? So I think the big, the big uh um the big one where it's different is probably asia 
where they have commitment levels on a different level completely uh, and work ethic i think it's just a culture um i'm married to a, a taiwanese lady so I, I know the asian culture um and it's hard work um and it's very hi hierarchical hierarchical um so 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 there's very different dynamics there through teenage years where you so you look at koreans for example and korean korean and, and women and how how they've 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 just grown tremendously over the last 30 years oh, or absolutely so. yeah um and their you know their culture is you listen to your parents um whereas the western culture is we don't listen to our parents so so you've got to you got to understand what the what the culture is as well and and but they've found a way where the it's very disciplined it's ingrained into the culture and it continues as they get into adults um so i think that's their far greater work ethic than the western western world i think um and it shows it shows yeah it's also the respect level remember Hideki, i always refer to that mm. when him and his uh, caddy bowed to the flag when he won the mm. masters yeah no player has ever done that. Yeah. Took a moment yeah. to reflect gotcha, like exactly. that. Gotcha respect uh, that. In the World Cup, if you look at the stadiums, how they were cleaned afterwards yeah. by no dictatorship, but because the people were so proud to have the people come back the next day that they wanted as in a clean environment. Yep. Um, exactly. So, 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 yeah. So, so, um, so definitely as a culture, um, Asian culture, um, I think, yeah, I don't think we're any different to, to the UK. Or I think, I think pound for pound person for person i think we've got probably the best talent around yeah um stats and, 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 and i think that comes from the lifestyle how, how kids grow up playing outside still yeah. compared to you know as america dominates golf because they've got the biggest numbers yes it's it's tens of millions yeah exactly, exactly. tens of so millions. you know high, high performance getting to I the high, get, getting to the top of your high performance pyramid the bigger your pyramid 100%. The, the, the more you're going to get at the top 100%. It's, it's just it's just numbers it's math so so um but yeah i think we we stand pound for pound uh talent we 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 nurture talent we, we develop talent um be, because of how kids run around so yeah. so so i think compared to the lifestyle here is still better to 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 grow up in um for, for developing athletes than it is um that certainly in colder countries where they're, they're inside a lot of the, a lot of the time um yeah so and and then then it's down to the individual whether they whether they th whether they're prepared to do what it takes you know so so you talk about tiger he does what he's prepared to take beyond what anyone else is going to do okay so for me you've got to be a little bit obsessed if you want to reach the top you've got to be obsessed and 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 um developing as a <coughs> as a as a high performance athlete or running a business for me it's the same it's the same it's the same success traits you've, you've got to do what your competition aren't prepared to do and if you're if you're not prepared to do what the competition is then you're going to be part of the pack and if you if you're not prepared to even do what the average com competition competition does you're not going to be even part of the pack you're not going to so so it comes down to what as an individual once you get to that point where you've got to do it or you don't you're going to succeed or not now are you prepared to put in what others aren't and you know as is the golf show but i just want to quickly so th i'm assuming that a lot of your philosophies and the way like which i've learned a lot about you today and i'm hopefully going to be able to apply that in my own uh, parenting style but the other sport that you also do have you taken that philosophy across the board 100 percent. okay 100 percent. yeah so so <coughs> um so so i went through the evolution of the of, of the golf programs and then so we were originally called the golf school of excellence um because obviously it was it was uh, it was golf focused and then got to 2015 around about um and particularly with the ev evolution of the junior academy and then we got approached by some some of the parents who were friends with some of our golf parents who were in other sports um that heard about the program we had okay can we do our school in with you um because we're high performance tennis player or high performance footballer so 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 we allowed a few other athletes into our study center um so first it was tennis and then football um and then that got us thinking well okay so if this model works for for golf 
then we can replicate it and, and it, it, it can work for other sports. Um, so then we started investigating what other sports we could we could um, we could go into. So so the IMG Academy is Academy is is in, in America is 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 kind of the vision that I have at IMG Academy for yeah. for, for Africa. Yeah, well. um, so which evolved from tennis academy, Nick Voluntary Tennis Academy. Um, they they attach golf, um, calling it the David Ledbetter Academy, and then added different sports on. Um, around uh, high school in and around sports science. Okay, and then they've they've obviously built over nearly fifty years now this amazing multi sport academy. So that so that's what I'm busy building for for Africa. Um, so we obviously started with golf, moved on to football, now on tennis and, ath- and uh, athletics. Athletic program. So so the philo- philosophies are pretty much the same. Um, so 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 we, so we had these kids in our study center, and then we thought, well, so can we? Can we then use our philosophies, what we've learned from golf, and set up our own uh, the, the training side of the sports as well? So, so tennis was a an easy one to associate with being a, a single sport. So, so I approached uh, over a number of years quite a few of the top tennis academies. No one to try and partner with them. No one bit. Um, eventually, I teamed up with a, um, a football coach, and and we opened our our, our, our second. Sports Academy was a was a football academy. It's been going. We're in our fifth year now. Uh, again, started small. Started with about ten kids. We've now got last year we had in the sixties. Really similar this year. That's flourished. Um, obviously, different dynamics, but the philosophies still remain the same. The education is vitally important. Um, the 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 way we nurture the kids. So so it's about developing their character, their academics, and their sport. So we have kind of a little pyramid. Character is the most important. Character is the foundation. Academics is next. If you've got those two in place, then you've got a chance of excelling in your in your sport. Okay. Beyond that, you know, we're not interested in in um, producing champions that no one likes aren't positive com- contributors to society. It's we want to build yeah. their character. We want to we want to provide multiple pathways for them once they get to whether it's eighteen leaving school or twenty one leaving college provide multiple pathways for them to be successful. So that's why the, the academics is so important. And it keeps them in playing their sport for longer um, rather than having to go and work. So so it works in so many different ways. So yeah, the basic philosophies are the same. Basic values are the same. It's about having a continual learning philosophy, um, being a positive contributor to the environment you're in, because a positive contributor to society, being a good person. You know, we're building good people through what we do at the same time we're building athletes what does what does the day or week look like for your academy mm. so from an educational to a fitness yeah. to a practical format what is that ratio so the so if i take our junior programs um so it's it's academics in the morning so we actually start with what we call an energizer so so we kick off kick off with a it's a 20 minute running around playing games um, it gets the brain chemicals going, it gets them energized. If they're hyper, it gets them centered, brings them down a little bit. If they're a little bit flat, it brings them up, so it centers them. Um, then we do a, and, and, and it's building long-term physical literacy as well. Um, so that's how we kick off. We used to do it as kids, uh, I don't know about your generation. No, so we, did. Our, we, our generation did. we used to do it as kids. We'd walk to school, cycle yeah. to school. Yeah. We'd be in the playground, cycle, playing I, I, soccer, I playing cricket, whatever it would uh, be, rugby, touch rugby. I think I did, I did six, seven Ks on a bicycle ex- before exactly. I got so, to so school. So we used to do those kids naturally. That was, yeah. but, And then we would play in the playground afterwards. And these days, we drive our kids to school. They're on their phones. We on our phones. We on our ph- exactly. So so the kids don't they don't have what we had. So we so we've systemized it. So that's how we kick off the day. Um, so it's twenty minutes energizer, and we'll play. Uh, I believe having a, a a team frisbee game, ultimate frisbee, or they'll be playing a bit of soccer. Wh- whatever the sport is, they'll play a different thing um, for those twenty minutes. Do a, a ten minutes um, kind of a meditation kind of thing to get get even more centered. Um, like a ten-minute motivational thing, um, and then eight o'clock we'll we'll kick off for four four and a half hours of, of class. Uh, the class is 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 not um, teacher led; it's tutor based. 
Um, so we call our, our, our academic staff facilitators. Um, so so they're there with their laptop, um, and they're busy from from minute one. They're busy. They've got they've got what they need to work on for the day or for the week. They've got certain tasks they need to fulfill, and they just get on with it. And um, they choose what they're gonna do. So 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 there's not a class of mass where the teachers doing yeah. mass for that hour. They're either listening, a lot listening, dreaming about golf, <laughs> whatever it is, and wasting that hour. Um, from minute one, they're getting on with their stuff. There's 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 online um, assistance in terms of resources that they can, you know, kids learn from Googling yeah, stuff yeah, these yeah, days yeah, anyway. Sure. So there's resources online yeah. for them to self-learn. Uh, if they're stuck on something, hand up. There's facilitators in the classroom um, who can assist them if they're stuck. If they're really stuck in the facilitators who are generalists, um, uh, academic generalists, if they can't help, um, then we, we book a session with a, a subject specialist, a tutor session, uh, which will be a half hour one-on-one -on -one tutor session. Okay, so there's multiple levels of, of, um, of, of support. One kid's doing maths next to another kid that's doing English, another kid that's doing geography, all at the same time. Um, so there's no wasted time, you know, lis not listening to the teacher. Okay, so they get on with their stuff. Gets to one o'clock, they're finished, half hour lunch, half past one, and I'll talk about the golf program, half past one till half past four is the golf program now. And that's a combination of range time, on course time, gym time, a um, bit of mental time. Um, so it's a, a nice combination of that. And depending on where they are in terms of their their development stage, sometimes they need a little bit more range work because we're, we're doing Something, more, more, yeah. more technical building. You know, you spoke earlier about the difference between youngsters and, and, and a pro. It's, uh, are you building technique and building performance or are you maintaining? Okay, so it depends on where they are. So. If if they're at the stage, if they they've been with us a few years and it's more maintenance, they'll be more on the golf course. Um, if it's more building, then we'll we'll be doing more. They they need to more technical based, um, so there'll be a lot of repetition on the on the on the range. Um, plus, we'll also we'll, we'll always build a lot of skills development into the into the stuff as well. So we like a high percentage of of short game compared to range. Uh, most of the time, we're trying to drag them off the range to get them onto the golf course or or onto the short game. We know that you, you develop as, as players on the golf course. Um, so we don't want to develop range rats. Um, and uh, so that's Monday to Thursday, and on Friday we play a medal at World Go Road in Kensington. Yeah. So um, you really focus on practicing with purpose? 100%. Yeah. 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 100%. And Michael, it's maybe a selfish question here, but um, so kids today, with because we always talk about feel in sport, it's vitally important. Mm -hmm. Um, but technology as well, um, which how big of a part is that now of the juniors coming up? Um? Yeah, I think it's important. I think it's got its place. I yeah. think I think sometimes you can overemphasize. Some coaches and academies overemphasize it. Um, we all went through a stage. We we, we we bought radar machines and we overused them, or the, whatever it is, the 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 three D things. And you you as a coach, you invest, mm. and then you 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 overuse it. Um, so that you you then learn, you uh, over time you learn how best to use it. Yeah. Um, so I think it's it's a vital tool. Um, we use it for benchmarking and testing uh, where guys are, um, and and we learn uh, and we use it for training. Um, so it's like any training aid. It's got it's got its place. Um, shouldn't be all the time. Uh, if it's being used all the time, it's being overused. But um, there's times when it's really useful, and it can it can really uh, help getting the message across. Um, so just like video analysis, um, we we u will use that sparingly. Just like a training aid, if you're using a training aid all the time, you become over reliant on it. Take the training away, aid away, which you've got to do on the golf course. Then what do you do? So so you can't rely on technology. You can't rely on a training aid. Um, they're there to assist the player or the coach. To get a message across to the to the player, so yeah, I think it's vital. There's amazing data that we can get now that we didn't have when we were when we were developing, um, which can uh, really accelerate the development process. Um, so I think if you're not using it, then you're missing out. But it's 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 as and when. So that that's the the art of coaching is when to when to intervene with words when to in intervene with a training aid when to in intervene with getting them on data showing them data and how much of it you show them yeah so 
Michael, I tell you right there, I've, I feel so much more educated on stuff, and this is now this will be taken out. But what a perspective you've given us today. And I thought I knew a little bit more than I did. But like in this show, it's important for us. You've got great affiliated sponsors, sponsors and people that's been with you for a very long time that has helped you to drive the academy. And what's so amazing with you especially is that you first got the credibility and then the sponsors come on board. And of course, there's always people in the beginning that look at the vision and the dream, which a lot of players struggle to navigate with because they believe at 15 or 18, they are now the best and you should do everything for them. You know, at that particular point, it's just a vision. But I asked you some of your personal and most proud achievements and one of them said 19 years in operation. And I just want to take a moment there for people to understand why you put it down and I hope I'm not completely taking it out of, out of context, but to be that long in business is incredible credibility. You know, um, your programs must be working and it tells me you're adaptable because the environment has changed over 19 years. It tells me that you are keep innovating in your approach because, again, if you stuck, stuck by everything when you started at 19, you wouldn't be where you are today. So really proud of that, and uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. The, the growth and evolution in business, I now know why that's put on there because it's not where you started. Mm -hmm. You started with the intent, you started with the passion, and business evolved around that, and you learned, just like you are passionate about kids and coaching, you've also had to learn business side which is completely unemotional because it's about sustainability yeah. and the bottom line uh, and not always about the bottom line and when people speak about profits they always look at it as a negative part but that's how you grow and sustain and, and venture off to spread the um to spread the impact in the reach that you always yeah. have you've got the impact legacy with our students and graduates that's really wonderful to put that there because obviously yes it's a personal achievement but you're really saying there to us that you enjoy the growth, you know, from the people that you that go through your academies. And I'm, you must please stop me if I'm not doing justice to any of this. Sure. I just don't want you to brag about yourself. <laughs> 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 I'm doing it for you. Yeah. Um, you got the PJ Master Professional, um, which obviously we know how, how it takes to get there and, and to, uh, also to maintain it. So really well done on that. I'm very proud of the one, which I didn't know, the National Entrepreneur Award in 2018. So... Mm -hmm. Obviously, by then and, and, and now speaking to you, I understand that at some states they recognize that, hold on, you know, this is not a man that just coaches and, and he's, he's really built an incredible business. And then your coach of the year in 2013 and 18, um, that's also just a feat on its own, incredible, because you, like you say, you said it yourself, the, co the environment that we have here is very competitive. We all you know, small pool of people that are really good at what they do. So yeah. it's not yeah, easy great to win. Yeah. Great. I mean, that's why John Dix and I, were, you know, he's one was last year, yep. eh? 2022, yep. am I right? Yep. Uh, but again, what an incredible guy yep. that is, you know. Actually. Go to him yeah. and you'll find out. Yeah. Um, and then the project manager for RNA Project in Africa, mm. um, which people don't really know, but it's a Scottish, um, am I right? Or yeah, so it's, it's so so I know in Scotland, yeah. So it's a brand new, it's a brand new project. Yes, um, that has been a couple of years, eighteen months in the in the planning. So we got the the uh, the contract to run that. So it's uh, they're putting some money into developing the rest of Africa, uh, understanding that um, that South Africa has got great um, great history of developing players, um, and um, yeah, they're wanting more more players from Africa to play in the British Open. That's essentially the Open yeah. Championship. So that's that's essentially the, uh, in a nutshell, what they're wanting, and therefore they're putting money in, and they've put over the years a lot of money, direct to to to, to federations, and now they've they've uh, we we've been developing a, a high performance program since infancy. We just had our first uh, high performance camp in December, um, where we we brought nine players down from um, from three countries, from Kenya, from uh, Zambia, and from Zimbabwe with a few coaches as well coming down and um, had a week's camp at Royal Joba in Kensington. So that's the, the starting point of it. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's to, to, to improve the competitiveness, competitiveness of golf, competitiveness of golf across Africa is essentially the program. So it's, it's a, it's a great one to be involved in um, because I think it's much needed. Um, so it's almost a passion project. 
um, it's taken me away a little bit from the from the the business side, but uh, it's taken a lot of my time. But um, but it's planting but seeds it's, for but the it's, future. It's, it's it's an incredible project, so um, it's an exciting one to get into. And, the, and there's multiple coaches involved, and it's not just about us. It's uh, it's about getting more and more coaches involved in it across uh, the PGA uh, South Africa involved, uh, Olympic Solidarity Fund are involved. They're putting some money in as well. Um, so it's an amazing project from some some top international um, associations that. Uh, I think we can do some good. It's a ten-year project. Well, congratulations on that. And Thank also, you. like you say, you know, when a coach right now is listening to this, or somebody within golf, if you think you're busy, well, listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the yeah. other thing I just wanted to to, to end finish on this because the of, of our time here, because I think we um, we can sit with you for another hour. But I just want to talk about some of the sponsors that you have um, that's been with you as well. We normally highlight them here as well, um, uh, Michael, uh, because we know it's not everybody wants to listen to that. Almost when we talk about sponsors, everybody just slows down. But when you want the sponsorship, you pay attention. And sponsorship plays such a contributing part in golf. You know, uh, golf, firstly, as a... Um, a, a body that raises funds for things around the world. I know for a fact it's one of the largest bodies that does that. Um, and then two, sponsorship, you know, doesn't always just start at the peak. It also starts where you are sometimes nowhere. Um, so apologies for that. So you've got Shrikshin, Puma, Road Up, which I'm assuming is literally new because he's made a huge impact at the moment in South Africa. Yep. It's RV. Yeah, yeah. Yep. RV is, is, is yep. he also seems to golf parade, which is also fairly new. Yeah. But very proud of that South African company. Uh, yep. Made and grown right here. And I see as I go into clubs more and more, I can just see the stock is the stocking of that is getting higher. The the um, athletes against child abuse, mm. um, why is that with you? So that's because it's a much needed cause, cause. Uh, I wanted to get involved in. Um, so, yeah, it's as much needed. Um, you know, I think we're we're a long way behind it, international standards in terms yeah. of safeguarding yeah. how important it is overseas. We're working with the RNA and the yeah. Olympic Solidarity Fund has been really clear how how much of a the, so so the Olympic Fund um, that was the biggest most important part of the camp that we ran in December was a safeguarding. They weren't worried about what we did from a performance side. That was their most important uh, factor. So, and we had to do it to international standards. So it's it's about driving that message that um, that you know we've got to do better for our for our kids. Uh, we've got to provide environment where uh, abusers can't flourish. Uh, and unfortunately, there's been a lot of um, uh, pretty pretty high profile cases yeah. with private schools and sports where in the past it's been brushed under the carpet with schools of they'll they'll get rid of a teacher out of their own environment but then that teacher will go to another private school um and some of the federations national federations of sports have also been uh sweeping stuff under the carpets if it's a high profile coach so things need to change so it's about getting that message across that uh this is probably the most important factor in in youth development it's not it's not about how many pet champions we, we, we produce but you know are, are we providing a safe environment for our kids for all of our kids to play sport and to be educated and um so for me it's a it's a it's a again it's a passion project for me um just to get this word out how important it is and to to try and drive drive that message you know and <coughs> we our show has made a turn over the last since we started we never really read we mental uh, capacity comes up a lot with us and bullying yeah. uh, something yeah. we also feel very strong yeah. about you know of how shitty that is to do um and, and 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 it starts with the school systems going that's not cool you know you're not a bravo man or a girl yeah. to do that yeah. you know and it's something that we take quite seriously on the show too yeah. And then, you know, something that is a little bit closer to home. Um, and uh, I just want to say, Flightscape is also very fortunate to be involved with you um, as an institute. Um, and we are very proud of that fact. And, and you yeah, don't have yeah. to say anything on that, Michael. Um, everybody should know it's quite close to my heart. Mm. So thank you very much also for that involvement yeah, with us. Yeah, that's our pleasure as well. Yeah. Michael, yeah. for today, Arthur, I think both of us were quite silent on this one because we Correct. want... Correct. This to be the euro um, and, and what you said today, Michael. And I want you to know, Michael, that today was not just about sitting on a chair. If, if, if a parent takes the time to listen to this today, you know, we always 
overthink things. Um, and if you just take an hour, sit down, listen to what Michael said here today. Um, and I bet you right now that your mindset will change on how to approach your kid or navigate um, with your kid in certain places. So thank you for taking the time. Pleasure. And all the coaches that are there at your institute and everybody that's currently involved with you, your sponsors, all, all the passion that we see, all the development, the impact that you have on golf. We cannot say this enough, Michael. Thank you for coming to South Africa and driving that for us here. And, and of course, we see you as complete South African. And, and it's just such an honor that, that yeah. you are on the driving seat that you are. And I can tell you right now that if I had a kid today, a daughter or a, a, a boy, and I had any thought of where to go, um, I would certainly make sure that you are one of the options I look at. Thank you. Bless Thank you. you. It's my pleasure.